World Financial Group offers entrepreneurs from all backgrounds the opportunity to start their own business on a level playing field. Dr. Yana Woodhouse, receiving the WCM Wall Street Pioneer Award by the United Black Wall Street of America, Inc., is one of those entrepreneurs. I see WFG and TFA as a place where African Americans with an entrepreneurial mindset can flourish. And the bonus, we help families and serve the communities across the country. To learn more about us, go to worldfinancialgroup.com. We are the sons and daughters of the soul. We are resilient and forever forward thinking. We ask for nothing else than the opportunity to live and to create the lives that we were meant to live. We want nothing but an equal chance at options and possibilities. The same possibilities and options to live out our potential as our fellow man. We want to be heard, understood, and expressive in our reality. We are the future. We are the creator. We are here. told that she couldn't play with the boys. She was told that they were too big, too rough, too strong. She was told to give up her dreams and move on. She was told to just be pretty, be quiet, be a lady. She was told that women had to stay on their side of the court, stay in your lane. Playing and competing with men was insane. She was told that men and women would never be equal. Dreaming like that would only be linked to your mind and your soul. She never lived. She knew that their thinking was old. She is magic. She is the definition of spirit. She is what champions are made of. She is magic. Greetings and welcome to Access Wealth Nation with Dr. Yana B. Woodhouse, giving you that checkup from a neck up for your financial freedom. And of course, we're broadcast on the Soul City Network. Also, we're heard on WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem. Glad to be able to have this universal tap in taking place. And so we have some little things that we have to talk about first, you know, um, we are all about financial literacy and bringing financial literacy to our urban community. Why? Because it's not being taught. And it was such a pleasure talking to a young lady uh, this week who just basically said it. She didn't know that um, she had to pay taxes on the buying and selling of uh, stock, the more so the selling of stock, especially if she had a gain or a loss. These are just some basic things, but she said it so well. She said, why don't they teach us this stuff in, in school? You know, she says, I've gone all the way to college to my graduate degree, and I never have been exposed to any of this. And then she shared with me about credit that and I'm sure some of y'all may be able to relate to it, but that she got a credit card. She thought she was building her credit by using the credit cards. Sort of left out a little bit of pieces there called pay the credit card. I know some of you out there may be laughing, but it's no joke when you don't do this right. It is seriously a problem. And it's because people just don't know or they only got a piece of the puzzle. And if you only have a piece of the puzzle, then you don't have the puzzle. You don't have the answers and the solutions. So you know it's all about how money works. Of course, we have the book, How Money Works, Stop Being a Sucker. That's the book that sort of gives you that intro. 
And Stop Being a Sucker, you know, was written by uh, Tom Matthews and Steve Seabolt. But I distribute it in the urban community. Why? Because it's an easy book. And you know what they say. If you want to hide something, put it in the book. And so we're trying to change that whole mechanism. So to give you the opportunity to truly learn and ask questions. And so today we're going to cover a few things. Um, of course, if you'd like to get the book, all you've got to do is send an email to Anaj Enterprises Inc. That's A-N-A-J Enterprises Inc. at gmail.com. I got a few people who had a request today uh, for the book. So just say I would like the book. That's all. Yes, I'm still giving the book away and I will mail it out to you. Uh, of course, due to a little bit of a paper sh uh, shortage in China, we're hearing that it's taking a little longer to produce the books, but not to worry. Just make sure that once you get it, you've got to do with what one of my favorite characters in the book, Carl says, read the book. <laughs> you got to read it. It doesn't take long. It's amazing to me that people say that they haven't finished reading the book. And it's already, it's like, you know, three, four days. It takes no more than a, less than an hour to finish reading. And it took me an hour and 10 minutes and I read slow. So read the book. But ask for the book and then get it. Of course, you can get it on Amazon. So I think it's like 16 or $20. But why? This is one of your first financial lessons. Why pay for something when you can get something for free and it's the equal quality or the same quality, however you want to word it, but why do it? It's best to get what you can when you can. Okay. So before we get started a little bit further, I wanted to, this is Women's History Month. And of course, there's that element of women in in this world of who have dealt in the financial service world. Not many, but there are a few. Oh, almost forgot one little bit of thing I got to bring up is if after reading the book, you decide that you really need to do something. I got to take action because, you know, this is Women's History Month. So knowledge is, is king, but action is queen. <laughs> Make it work for you. And so if you'd like a free financial analysis, which means that you know where you are, we call it a discovery call. If you know where you are, then you can find out where you'd like to be and how do I get there? So to do that, you do a discovery call, a free financial analysis. You can call our offices at 646 three seven five two one two one and say that you heard on access wealth nation this uh opportunity to have a free financial no obligation uh analysis and we'll be we'll be glad to do it you know if you have a plan then you definitely are planning not to fail you know you got a plan but if you have no plan mm, you probably are planning to fail that's the issue. So we want to change that verbiage and say that you are no longer a sucker. I had someone call me and say, I am no longer a sucker. I'm moving forward and changing my life. And it's a word that we use sometimes is change your literacy to change your life. Now, through the years, we have been illiterate, especially in our community. We weren't allowed to read. We weren't allowed to learn to read as a people, but that all got changed. And when that got changed, we changed and we moved forward. And then when we couldn't go to the schools that other people went to, we opened up our own schools, initiatives. You know, I always take my hat off to the people who were of Black Wall Street because they had the initiative that segregation was not a stumbling block. They made it so that they opened up over 600 stores and businesses and served within their own community. A dollar lasted, a dollar lasted three 
to five years. Now, that's just powerful to me, three to five years. Where in our community right now, the dollar may last 40 minutes. <laughs> I mean, it's in one pocket, out of our pocket, into someone else's, and they take it on to their community. Need to stop it. You know, I remember sitting with uh, Dr. George Frazier, and I was so honored to be able to interview him. But also, one of the things he said is we've got to take on our own mission. And that's what this is. Access Wealth Nation is about a mission to make a change in our community, not to just charge you money and, you know, give you some videos to read or give you a website to go to. No, it's about putting that pedal to the metal and getting you to understand what you need to do to become financially literate and not only financially literate, but wealth bound. So I just wanted to put that out to you is, is that there's a change you're coming and either you're going to watch the change or you're going to be a part of the change. And so this is that mission that's taking place. And so you have no excuses saying that there's no one there to help you because we here at Access Wealth Nation are here to help. Okay, so that being said, we are in uh, Women's History Month and I want to bring a little bit of history to you uh, bit by bit. And that is there have been women throughout the centuries that have been involved in finance but nobody knows them. So I thought I'd bring some of them up. Uh, and one of them is Abigail Adams. Yeah, you may know her. She was the wife of a president, John Adams. But she happened to be the first woman documented in this country to, be a, to have financial investments. That's really sad, though. That, you know, but she's the first. And then there's... Uh, Victoria Woodhall, and Tennessee Cliff, Clap, Clap, Claffin, that's what it is, Claffin. And they were the first women to open up a broker-dealership, only woman-owned. That was 1970. Guess what? That's not that long ago. I was, okay, so I was in grammar school. But that's not that long ago. Um and then there was, uh, uh, okay, Muriel Siebert. Can't forget Muriel Siebert. Muriel was the first woman to buy a seat on the New York Stock Exchange. That's a powerful situation. I know y'all listening. I haven't mentioned anybody of color. I have not mentioned a Black woman. Well, I got to serve on Wall Street as a full service broker and to trade as an options trader. So I get to be one of those first up there. Don't tire of being first though. We need to just be. And then I don't want to be remiss in forgetting one person that I think we all should know. She's highlighted in the African American Museum in DC. Y'all should look for it. There's a small financial uh, section in the museum. And I'm still pushing that they sort of expanded more. They've got the uh, Black Wall Street, Tulsa, the burnings, little tiny article about Reginald Lewis, which will, you know, at some point we need to address because they're, they're doing some tributes to him. He is truly the first African-American man to um, be president and manage a Fortune 500 company. He owned Beatrice. If y'all don't know who Be the Beatrice is, you'd see it every day. It's called Tropicana and McCall's. Those are some of the products that were provided. So that being said, those are the, that's the male side. But let's talk about one female that is no one's talking about, and that's Maggie L. Walker. Mm. Who is Maggie L. Walker? For a moment there, I had that little feeling like I should make everybody look her up, but you still need to look her up and hear her story. But she happens to be the first African-American woman to be a banker, to open up a bank. 
you know, I probably get my hand slapped for this, but segregation really wasn't all that bad in that sense of, of business. Because if you didn't let us work, go in your stores and buy product, we went and got our own and bought from our own. You know, there's a poet that's out there, Kasem Ala, and he has a poem that says, maybe we should bring segregation back. I know I'm not trying to boycott everybody else's business, but as one of our uh, writers um, and friend, Sean Rochester, who wrote the Black Tax book, he said it well, we just trying to stop people from boycotting our businesses. We have a right to build our own businesses and contribute and 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 patronize our stores. And we need to be more conscious of it to build our community. It's all about economics. It's about the green. But look up Maggie Walker. She took a lot, you know, it's a lot to have to be the first but it's also a lot to be the first and be a person who is black, African-American standing and people keep blocking your growth and your ability to make a difference. And again, we don't have excuses because no matter what we have these people who, whose shoulders we stand on. So it gives us that opportunity to know possible. That's my favorite word next to divine order is possible. Why? Because if somebody else has done it, or if the door is open, then therefore it's possible. And we need to be focused on how to get things that are possible. So that being said, I want to introduce to you a book that's coming out shortly. It had its, um, uh, earmarked uh, uh, opening last month, and it is the How Many Works for Women. So we have Women's History Month, and we have the How Many Works book for women. And the subtitle is Take Control or Lose It. Mm. What does that mean? It means that you need to learn some basic concepts especially as women, because people think we're not worthy. You know, I have heard some terrible stories from financial advisors who have gone, not from the financial advisors, but from the wives of the people that they're serving. And they're saying, you, um, you don't even talk to me. They don't talk. One client rep told me, not a rep, but a client a prospective client said to me, I can go cook, clean. I can have conversations on the telephone. And the financial advisor that's in the room doesn't even stop to say, hey, I'm trying to show you something. Nothing. That says nothing to her. She says, as soon as my husband died, oh, yes, she did say that. Uh, I'm getting a new financial advisor, and I believe it's almost 63% of the women who uh, have a household with a financial advisor who serves them gets rid of them as soon as the spouse dies. That's what happens. So I say to you, because we've got to become financially literate, we've got to get on the ball. Now, I know some of you are, you thought I was going to not talk about it. Some of you may talk, may realize about the banking system and you all are nervous about the banking system right now. Okay, I got some questions for you. How many of you invested in cryptocurrency? How many of you invested in banks that deal in cryptocurrency? And then how many of you have... Um, have done venture capital banks that deal in Silicon Valley. Think about it. When they put these things out, yes, is it bad? 
but those people took certain knowledgeable risk in investing or putting their money in the banks. I'm going to take a moment to talk about it, really putting your money in the bank. There are certain things that the bank is good for. There are certain relationships the banks are good for, okay? But if you know that the bank and FDIC, the, the Federal Depository Insurance Company, uh -huh, or what I call funds don't increase correct, okay? If that's the case, you got FDIC insurance to $250,000. So the question comes into play, why would you have more than $250,000 either in the bank, the institution, or even in the case of in one account? Now, that's a little secret that's there. I'm just going to tell you. The secret is that for every account, new registration is $250,000 covered. So if that's the case, if you have an IRA, an individual retirement account, that is $250,000 in there or less, because it would make sense to have less, or if you have an account that is just you, that's a single account, but if you have an account that's a joint account, okay, these are some of the rules of FDIC, is, is that each one of those accounts is $250,000 protected. But let's talk about this FDIC insurance. It says up to, now you will know when you have a, a discount, you know, you go in the store and they have a sale and the sale says up to, and you say, well, well, how much is really the sale? You say up to 50%, up to 70%. That means you're not getting the 70% or the 20% or whatever. It means that up to. So that's the same thing. Now I'm going to bring back some history here. There was a bank years ago called Freedom National Bank. It was in Harlem. A truly owned, Black-owned bank a truly black owned bank, Freedom National. Unfortunately, the state of New York refused to bail them out, similar to the situation with interest rates going up and they weren't able to keep enough premiums on online. And so that being said, those individuals lost because the FDIC only paid 25 cents on each dollar. It didn't say they had to pay dollar for dollar. And they didn't. Now let's take a look and keep your eye open and watch what's going to happen with uh, Silicon Valley uh, Bank and Signature Bank. Let's see what's going to happen there. I already know. They're going to pay probably dollar for dollar. They're just not guaranteeing that they're going to pay over the 250000 But they're going to do it, you know. But even if they don't, where's your money? What facility are you on? You know, I've heard people right now tell me they are going into gold and silver. And I'm like, Why? Because Joe the Elevator Man told them to do so, you know. They're not watching what's really happening. If you're really looking for stability, if you have gold and you need to trade, what are you going to trade it for? Probably Federal Reserve notes. Yes. So the reality isn't that. The reality is, is that you need things to work with. And I will challenge y'all. Here's my little challenge. And y'all come back next week and tell me what you found out. How do you buy a chicken in Venezuela? I know that sounds weird, right? But that's my question to you. How do you buy a chicken in Venezuela? And then take a look and see how things can get. So that being said, we're going to have a little bit of a lesson here. I want, I want you all to really, oh, before I do that, I need to put something up because I want y'all to know tonight, tonight after the show 
at 7.30, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. We are having a special presentation for women, okay? It's a special presentation. And I'm trying to see if I have the, I think we have the flyer to put up. It's at 7.30. Um, if you're in Florida and Tampa, you can come on by and you can share and meet some of the ladies. But for all of us who are not in Tampa, you can go on uh, Zoom. And on the Zoom, there's a meeting uh, ID of uh, 807-114-9286. Okay, and the passcode is HMW, that stands for how money's work, how money works, 2023, because we are on a crusade. The crusade is to bring financial literacy to our community, but you know what? I remember they say if you teach a woman, you have taught an entire community or a village because the women teach the children. So we're into teaching these women. And it is, the tagline is discover the financial realities women face today and how to take control of your financial future. You know, that's an empowering thing when you say you're going to take control of your financial future. You need to do so. Why? Because if you get let someone else make the decisions, they're going to uh, make the money and they're going to control their financial future. But what about you? It's just a reality how it works. And we, we are in a capitalistic society where we have the ability to build and create our own businesses and also to take care of ourselves financially. But if you sit back and wait for someone else to take care of you, then you can't take that. You've given them your power. Don't do that. You know, you can make a difference. So that I wanted you all to know, please sign in 730. Myself and Kim Schooler. Kim Schooler is, uh, well, was the uh, president of the broker dealership called World Group Securities. I'll never forget when I first met her that to see a woman stand up on that stage and command the power of owning and being a president of a major broker dealership. Broker dealers, for those who don't know, are the places where brokers, people who are licensed work through to be able to provide services to you. So she and I are going to be speaking on No Woman Left Behind and the power of financial literacy. So Kim, because she is the uh, co-author with Sharon Lecter of the How Money Works for Women, Take Control or Lose It. Okay, let me see if I move it over here. There we go, put it over here. Take Control or Lose It. So she and Sharon Lecter. Now, some of y'all may not know who Sharon Lecter is because it took me a while to know who Sharon is was and now she's a friend but sharon lecter if you all have heard about the rich dad poor dad book with robert kiwasaki look this is how they treat us as women i know sharon <laughs> is the little writing on the bottom says sharon lecter co-authored then there's the um think and grow rich book for women she authored that she offered over authored over 27 books and thankful she is authoring another book for women to help us to learn more about how money works. That's as simple. So when the books come out, I will be there for the second launch because this was a light launch. Now we're going to have the heavy launch probably in April or May, and hopefully it'll be after tax season. But Anyway, I will be there because this is powerful time and it meets my mission. If there's no other missions out there, my mission is to bring financial literacy and make a difference in our community. 
Okay, so that being said, what are we going to learn today? What's this the topic today? So the market. We all have been upset talking about the market. I think I've sort of got y'all to understand that is not necessarily something for you to be upset with. The key is, is that you have to have your plan together. And because the market has gone down, but now it's up again, up, down, up, down. There's so many formulas that you can use to see how do you basically embrace this these changes. You know, when I first started in the market as a broker, the Dow Jones was 1,800 points. Now, if y'all don't know what the Dow is, it's 30 companies. It is not worldwide companies all over and, and groups of companies, 30 companies. That's just a, a, a slight view of some of the industries. It's not the complete view. So you're only getting a peak, but everybody starts to get nervous over this Dow Jones, which I believe they should be looking at the S&P 500. Now what's the S&P 500? Standards and Poor's 500. And by looking at the Standards and Poor's 500, now you got cross-section of companies since 1923, there have been this cross section of looking at all the companies and industries. Guess what? Since its inception, over a hundred years, right now you're looking at the the S and P 500 has averaged nine percent, nine. And I'm going to address some of the things one day about how just to learn what does that really mean, but we get all bent out of shape and nervous, but yet we're not nervous about 1% from the bank or 5% from the bank because the bank is taking your money and using it to make more money. I'm not hating. You just need to join the party, you know, and to do so, how do you do that? Is is that you sit with a financial educator a financial advisor, and plot out a plan for your future. That's what you do. You know, you need that plan. So, yes, the market was down for two days straight. Now it's up again, you know, and it will go up and down. There's so many things and factors that I'm hoping you understand that really you have no control over because the countries are having trouble, just like this thing about the book coming out and we had issues with trying to get the paper. Well, we don't manufacture paper. Matter of fact, in the United States, I would love to hear from someone tell me, what do we manufacture? Because <laughs> there's so many things we don't manufacture, but what do we manufacture here? And most of the cases we buy, we import instead of being able to export, instead of able to sell things we're able to buy. It almost sounds like our community, we buy. We know how to make money. We know how to spend it, but do we know how to get that money to make money for ourselves or make it work for us? That's one of those things that's missing. So that being said, I thought I would love to take this opportunity and give you all a little lesson. The first time ever, and if you get the book, if you request the book, you also are going to get uh, from MNBC. I would say it wrong. So NBC, MNBC did a fact check of the book. And one of the things that they fact checked, the fact that they checked was the rule of 72. They could not believe that the interest rates, number one, being so low, but number two, they're so low in so many banks. And then the probability or, in my words, possible, the possibility of your money doubling and how long would it take for your money to double? This is a lesson to learn. So you can get your pads out and paper. 
because this is a time to understand when someone can say to you, do you understand the rule of 72? And it's interesting because 72, seven and two equal nine. Now I'm, I'm going to be my, my friend Lloyd Strayhorn. That's nine. That's a universal number, isn't it, Lloyd? Yes. So this being said, we're going to go through the, you're ready for the rule of 72. How do I make my money double? So it is a mental math shortcut for how long it takes for your money to double. Okay. So the formula, yes, there's a formula. And the thing is, is that we got to stop being frightened of math. Math is important. It has its place. Shoot, it wasn't until, let's see, I guess I was uh, just starting on, on Wall Street as a broker. And I recognized being able to do a financial calculator and how algebra played in me calculating how I, my clients' returns were. Math can be your friend, not your enemy. It's your friend. Numbers are don't lie. People do. <laughs> okay. So that being said, let's look at the rule of 72. You take the number 72 and you divide it by your interest rate. And it'll tell you how long or what time for your money to double. So I'm going to give you a simple form, this simple formula, and you should write it down. Because let's see if I can. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to take a look at the rule of 72. Of course, the higher the interest rate, the fewer years it takes for your money to double. Okay. Think about it. So if you take that 1%, which is most of the things that banks are, are um, paying you, 1%, if you get 1% divided into 72, that got it. In 72 years, you have doubled your money. So if you put a dollar today into the bank at 1%, <clears throat> in 72 years, it's going to be $2. Uh -huh. That's not much to get happy over, okay? Especially with that $2, you're going to have to pay tax. You're going to have to deal with inflation. Not much to talk about when it comes to the, the rule of 72. But let's look at, oh, yes, and by the way, let me mention, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. You know, I know a lot of y'all ask me after, but if you have any questions, let's look a little deeper on this rule of 72. Let's take 72 and let's divide it by hmm, six. So you think, well, that's six times the time. How long will it take my money to double? It'll be 12 years. Okay, so that means if you had an investment of one dollar well at least at six percent it'd be two dollars in 12 years so baby gets a dollar for their birth and they turn 12 years if they got six percent they turn 12 they now have a whopping two dollars but it's still it's in 12 years so the question is why would i do that I need more. Yes, we all need a little more. Yes. So what do you do? Well, remember I said about the S&P 500? I hope y'all remembered what I said. The average is 9%. Well, if that's the case, 9 divided into 72, that means your money doubles every eight years. That's a little better. Of course, the 12 is great, and that's every six years. But let's just focus in on that 9%. And if you can find investments that are doing about 9%, and they're there, everybody shake your head. Yes, they exist. Okay. So that means every eight years, your money will double. Okay, so we're going to take one of the characters. And yes, this is in the book. 
So this is Zoe. Zoe is a young 19-year-old. And I know some of y'all out there, you young folks, I'm still trying to see how can I get to you to understand that in today's world, you need to start saving right now. Or some of the folks say right now, right now. So if you're, as Zoe says, I'm 19 and I just received $10,000 inheritance. Well, girl, you lucky. Because that's one of the things that's happening these days. The baby boomers are leaving this earth. Even though they're multiplying greatly, they're getting older. They are uh, the average baby boomer. Every seven seconds, 10,000 baby boomers are turning 65. I'm getting ready to join that group. And there's, you know, millions and millions, 76 million baby boomers out there. So... That being said, she says here, if I wanted to grow to a million dollars by retirement, now that's something rare to try to get young people to use the word retirement. They haven't even started at 19 working, but could you start to save even though you're not working yet? Yes, you can, you know. So how many doubles? That's how she's saying it. And what interest rate do I need to make this into a million dollars? So if we look over to the chart to the right, I'm hoping that we can, y'all can see it. If not, I'll read this to you. You'd need more than 9% in interest and almost seven doubles to reach a million dollars by age 67, okay? I'm hoping you feel in this. This is when we need to start. Now, I honestly believe that this country started uh, giving people, babies, social security numbers, not just because they wanted to make sure people, and when they're deducting as a dependent for a child, that this is a real child, but also to be able to start programs such as this, and such as some of the insurance products that are out there so that in the future they can create generational wealth. That means from generation to generation to generation, including making making money make make itself and double itself. So let's go look at that 9% though. If she had $10,000 at 9%, uh, at nine percent, in that okay, we say seven years, she has um, twenty thousand. Then, in seven more years, she's got forty thousand. So she would get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven doubles. Okay. Well, it turns out eight really because of the first level. Okay. So she gets no. She got six doubles, right? Is that six? Yes, that's six. So if she has six doubles and then she looks and she has $640,000, that's not a million, but she's let that money sit there and she's let it grow at 9% doubling continuously. Okay. But if that's the case, 640 does not help meet the mark. That's not our goal. Now, there's a few things she could do. One thing would be she could add to it as she's going about in life and help it to grow. But another thing is to find a higher interest. And that's where that 12%, do you see that if she had done 12%, that would give her those doubles, eight doubles that she could at that point reach. 2 point, what's that? 2.5 in a million dollars. 2.5. Now, how many people at 67 would love to have 2.5 million dollars? Very possible. Now, when she's doing this, you know you have, and that's one of our conversations is tax now, tax later, or tax never. So that's a discussion that you have with your financial educator. The longer 
that you wait, the more you have to save to reach that. So Zoe is 19 years old. So all she would either have that lump sum of $10,000 or she could save $113 at that 9% rate, $113 a month. So that's a part-time job, sometime job, spare time job. Okay. And that she put away continuously till she turns 67. She'll hit that million dollars for sure. But what most people do is, is that they wait till they turn 50. And at 50, you have to put away $2,088 a month. Now, some people can't do that. That's just reality. And especially single by themselves, it's real difficult. Even when they're earning kind of nice in the six figures, it makes it difficult. But a couple could possibly do it. And I tell folks, think about it this way. One saves and puts their entire check towards the retirement. And the other one uses theirs for uh, living expenses. Now, I will say we, we we have passed through the Valentine phase, <laughs> but I would say is, is that this is a time that people have to write contracts because just in case y'all don't make it, okay, at 67, you don't want to hear the story. I didn't, I, I, I kept all the money, you know, I put it away. It's my money. And the person who paid the bills gets nothing. So that's a that's a no-no, okay? So other than that, at age 50, putting that type of money, you still can reach that million dollars. And don't wait till you're 60 years old because that's over $8,589 a month. That's not just one time. Like Zoe with her 10,000, just think about it. She can reach it by letting her 10,000 just grow. But she can't do it if she's doing it monthly and she waits. There's a price for waiting. So you need to be. So this, these are some of the concepts that we teach as far as financial literacy is concerned. And I just wanted to share those for you and with you. Why? Because if you understand how money works, You'll know that it is is a, a, a time that you have to take action. It is so important to take the action. So I say to you also, if to reiterate, those of you who uh, have the opportunity, even the men, if you'd like to come to the women's event, you're going to learn something. It's so important to be able to learn something. Let me see if I have one more. Oh, here we go. And then this is my final slide because we're going to have to um, stop and head out and get ready for this presentation, which I really would implore all of you to attend on Zoom and um, be able to uh, listen to what could possibly be something that can help you to reach your goals, even as a man, but as a woman, what you need to pay attention to. And I'm going to put another caveat there is, is that most women end up either single and handling finances or they're single with a child, the spouse has died and they're widows. And I remember when I first did a presentation and I had to say it, that on an average, we create over 800,000 widows. Yeah, every year. Why? Because most of the time, you men out there just don't go to the doctor and take care of yourselves. And we as women, from the time we are little girls, Ma takes us to the hospital, to the doctor, to get our checkup. So therefore, we have a lot of people who pass on. And when they do, if they're your spouse, you need to know where your money is. You need to know where the money is and who is the money under, who's to receive it. 
and what kind of benefits do you have? All of that's important. But I'm going to take a little bit more time to just go over what I think is the most important factors to your roadmap to financial security and independence. It's called the seven money milestones. And you know what a milestone is? It's hitting a level that you've never hit before. And so if that's the case, then at that point, don't you think you need to know how to draw that map out? Answer should be yes. So just to cover these seven money milestones, they're in the book, but I'm going to explain to them the things that you need to be shooting for. The first one would be to, even if you came tonight to the session, but we have sessions all over the country, financial education, become financially literate. Understand just what you learned tonight with the rule of 72. How do you make your money double? We all want to know. We just afraid to tell somebody I don't know. Well, it's better to ask and learn than to not ask and then not know what you're embarrassed about. That someone didn't teach you? Not your fault. Also, in the financial education part, it says find a financial professional. And don't just take the first one, interview them. Ask them what do they believe in? How do they get paid? How do they, uh, their philosophy in growing money? They should be willing to share that with you. Okay, now let's look at the money milestone number two, proper protection. That means protection against the loss of income. That's if your partner, spouse, whatever died. But suppose they didn't die. Let's suppose they had a catastrophic illness. Mm. That you can have proper protection against. And the worst thing is to wait until you need it. You know, with it, when you have a car accident and you did, only had liability, you sit back and say, Dad, I should have had full coverage and collision. Too late when it's already happened. Got to figure out how to pay for things before they happen. So proper protection against the loss of uh, income and also to protect against the loss of your savings. That's why I brought up the uh, whole element of your spouse not dying, but your spouse being ill and how that can drain the family assets. So make sure you have proper protection. The next thing is the emergency fund. That is to save three to six months of income. Now you don't do that all at one time, okay? It sometimes takes a little time to build up, but you know, we have these jars, we got the water jugs, start saving, put the money away. I like to play games like um, hoard your fives. What's hoard your fives? You take your anytime, you know, we become magicians. Y'all didn't know we were magicians, right? But we magicians. How are we? Because we become David Copperfield when we get a $20 bill. We go to the store, we buy one thing and poof, the whole $20 bill gone. So the key is there is, is to make sure that doesn't happen and if anything save what you can if it turned into five dollars that you had left hoard your fives if you have fifty dollars and you end up with four twenty uh four four dollars uh four five dollar bills you gotta put them away but to thy known self be true so don't play with it put it in there so that you can build it and all of a sudden you'll start to see that you have started saving and then you know what your target amount is three to six months of your income for me here in new york i think it's more than that i think you should have a year's worth of income put away like i said it's not going to happen overnight but you know that's your target you know they say that's the whole key is is that if you're one place then when you have the target you know which way you're going and even if you sway off of it 
periodically, you still get the opportunity to jump back on and do it again. And then you prepare for, through that emergency fund, you prepare for the emergencies, the unexpected expenses, you know, and that's very important. And so you do those things to create that emergency fund. There's another game that's online that you can have fun with, which is take um, a dollar for every week in the year. It gets a little difficult around the $40, uh, the 40th week, uh, but you'll have like $1,372 when you're finished. Now, I know some of y'all are saying that's not a lot of money. Yeah, try that 10 times, you're up to $13,000. Hmm. 10 years, yeah, it can happen. But it's better to try it than not to at all and have nothing to show for it, okay? All righty, then we have debt. I know none of y'all are in the debt world, okay? But you can find ways, and of course, you go to Tuesdays at 6 p.m. on Soul City Network, you can listen to Tyrone Glover, the credit doctor, the dress down credit CEO, and get him to work out a plan for you. And that's so important so that you can get rid of, eliminate debt, or change your spending habits. You know, sometimes you just need the person to look at what you've been doing just to tweak. Of course, we need cash flow, and cash flow means to, I'm going curse now, I'm going to say the word, okay, here it goes, budget. <laughs> we got to have a budget, know what's coming in and what's going out. Do I, how do I save? Can I save? Do I need another job? Do I need a business? You know, what do I need to get out of the rat race, which is part of the Robert Kiyosaki book? Then we have building wealth. You've got to understand about building wealth because something's impacted. One is taxes. Now, I know you all know this is tax season. And as you file, you thought you were going to get all this refund. You know the laws have changed. So therefore, you're not getting as much as you did before. But also, you should see what your W-4 form is and how you are withholding with taxes. If your tax preparer, accountant, financial advisor cannot give you an answer to how much you need to withhold or how much you need to put into your retirement plan, your 401k plan, your 403b, your IRA, if they can't tell you how much you need just to start to build and to save and to build wealth, get rid of them, fire them and get a new one. Also, you want to deal with the losses, the impact of losses. You know, you don't have a loss to yourself, okay? So just because you see a paper loss does not mean that you have an actual loss. Those are reality, reality of the loss comes when you liquidate, sell, okay? And then inflation. We know what inflation is. If we didn't know, you know it now because inflation is here. And anytime you have a dozen eggs for seven bucks, mm -hmm, it's here. So when you go to the grocery now, you've got to, okay, go back to that cash flow and budget to how much money are you going to have to really buy food. So, and, and, and clothing, the things, the basics, can I pay rent? You know, you're going to see a lot. Right now, there was a news report on more parents are moving back with their children twofold they become the babysitter for the children but also they cut the rent down or the mortgage down by assisting and helping so that's it as far as building wealth you've got to accumulate and grow your assets to the future so you need to grab on to that rule of 72 to make that happen because now you know you got to make your money double. It's got to move fast, got to move fast. Now, last but not least in our seven money milestones is creating a will. Not only a will, but a trust, directives, 
understanding all the paperwork to protect the wealth that you're building. Some of y'all may say, I don't have any wealth. Close your eyes right now and say, you're gone. What's happening to all that stuff? You know, today I had a client come in and he was showing me all of the collectibles he had. And I was sitting there in my mind was saying, how are we protecting this upon his death or non-death? You know, he might have might sell it all, whatever, but he's got to do something. It has to be done. Action has to take action to protect it because I've seen so many people um, who have collectibles who have certain things that have value and the family has not a clue that they have this. And so they either sell them or they throw them away. And then that becomes somebody else's wealth. So I'm just saying to you, make it simple, put it in writing, you know, and guard your legacy. We have to guard legacies. We have to build and it has to be legacy building, wealth building. That doesn't happen overnight. It takes generation to generation to build generational wealth. And the way it starts, if it is to be, it has to start with me. It has to start with you doing something and not being so selfish to just figure out, oh, I got my money. They got to go get theirs. It doesn't work that way. You've got to definitely think about what the next generation what my thoughts are is, is that your children shouldn't have to start from dollar one. They can start with 10,000 and that 10,000 grow to, to uh, 50,000 and that 50,000 grow to 100,000 and the family be able to have it without paying a lot in taxes, trust accounts. All those things mean a lot, but you've got to guard it because if not, and I don't know how many of y'all have gone to the unclaimed funds in the states that your family have been, but you should always look into unclaimed funds and see in the state that you have lived in different states, if you've got different states or family members who have passed that are in different states. You need to be able to look and see what uh, may be there that's being held by the state. Do these things. Be proactive. So I hope you learned something tonight. I hope you sign on so that you can uh, get a little bit more knowledge. Ladies, don't miss this opportunity. It is always, as usual, a pleasure to be able to share knowledge with you. And if you have any questions, always feel free to reach us at Anaj Enterprises, Inc., at gmail.com or come on board to the show and definitely ask your questions. It's always a pleasure to serve. And then also another thing is, is that as we have our classes, please come on board. You can sit at your home in your PJs. So let's get together and change this world and get our checkup from the neck up and become financially educated and eradicate the illiteracy. So again, it was a pleasure. This is Dr. Yana B. Woodhouse serving you again from Access Wealth Nation and on the Soul City Network and of course with WHCR 90.3 FM. Y'all have a good night. Be safe. She was told that she couldn't play with the boys. She was told that they were too big, too rough, too strong. She was told to give up her dreams and move on. She was told to just be pretty, be quiet, be a lady. She was told that women had to stay on their side of the court, stay in your lane. Playing and competing with men was insane. She was told that men and women would never be equal. Dreaming like that would only be linked to your mind and your soul. She never was. She knew that their thinking was old. She is magic. She is the definition of spirit. She is what champions are made of. She is magic.